Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. We're going to see if we can fix my leaking six gallon fuel tank today. So I recently discovered one of my six gallon fuel tanks was leaking right around the gauge. There's a split right next to the gauge on the top of the tank and there's a little bit of fuel leaking out of there, but there's nothing leaking around the cap. There's nothing leaking where it connects to the fuel line. It's just right here around the fuel gauge. Obviously, they're not supposed to do that. The modern tanks are actually supposed to puff up whenever they're uh, filled up with pressure. This one has not been puffing up and you can smell gas around it a little bit. So it's not safe to use like this and it needs to be addressed. So I went to look what a new tank costs and they're about $80. So then I looked to see if I could get some repair components for this tank. I couldn't find any right off the bat. Uh, I took a few looks around on the internet and I couldn't find where you can buy new gaskets or new bases for the fuel gauge on one of these tanks. Because if I could pick up that for 10 bucks or so, that's cheaper than buying a new tank. So my thought is if I get some gasket sealer that is specifically for use on fuels, I should be able to seal up around this and make this tank good as new. What have I got to lose? I'll try some of that around there. If it works, great. I saved myself from buying another tank. If it doesn't work, that's fine. We made a video and I proved that it doesn't work. So that'll be good for you and for me, right? All right, let's get started on this. What I try to do when I make one of these videos is I'm trying to do something decently, trying to do it kind of the right way and everything. I'm sure people will comment below, the right thing to do in this situation is just buy a new tank. These tanks are $80 new, which isn't cheap, but it also isn't expensive and it's fuel. You could risk a fire, you could risk blowing up, blah, 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 blah. I know all that. I'm just trying this out. I want to see what happens. If I destroy this tank trying to fix it, that's okay. Unless I melt the metal here, melt the metal, <laughs> unless I melt the plastic here, I'm really not taking too big of a risk because these tanks are meant to be pressurized. This area is meant to be sealed tight. Anything that is supposed to be able to release any pressure is either the cap or through here. It's not here. So. My risks are that I melt through the tank and put a big hole in the tank and contaminate my fuel. Okay. My other risk is that uh, it, uh, it doesn't seal. It doesn't do its job. Oh, okay. Did a little bit of research. Ideally, <clears throat> there are people who make special compounds that are supposed to be fuel resistant that are like sealing compounds and things like that. I saw some on the internet and I went to my auto parts store and a couple other places. I couldn't find them in the store. I also didn't want to spend $20 for something like that to seal this up. I kind of wanted to see if I could do this really, really cheap. So I went ahead with good old JB Weld. And JB Weld can be found everywhere. So that's the beauty of JB Weld. And if it works for this, that's a win because it's not very expensive. This was less than $10. I looked up and standard JB Weld seems to be pretty resistant to fuels and, um, and it works on plastics. It doesn't melt to the plastics. So one of the things I want to do though is I want to clean this surface pretty good first and I'm thinking that acetone, which I use on a lot of things, is not a good idea in this situation. We're going to use white vinegar. While I'm cleaning it with white vinegar, there's another thing uh, about all this as well. And that is, you're supposed to drain the tank first. Uh, everything I read said, make sure you drain the tank completely. Once again, I'm trying to go for a cheap, fast fix here. Draining this tank completely down, that does not uh, satisfy the cheap, fast fix because these kind of tanks, you can't drain very easily. I'd have to pump the fuel out of here. I don't really want to pump all the fuel out of the tank. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with um, you know, uh, letting it all, uh, after I drain it out, like letting it sit and dry for several days to evaporate and, you know, make sure it's super clean. I really don't want to do that. I want to kind of see if I can do a down and dirty fix on this to have this tank get me through another season. So if I can just wipe this off with vinegar, 
patch it up with JB Weld, and this tank is good to go again, that's a win, right? Okay. I'm just taking my paper towel soaked in white vinegar, and I'm just wiping this area down as best I can. I think one of the things I really don't want to do is I do not want to get JB Weld on my fuel gauge there. So I think that's one of the things um, I'm going to I'm going to tape that off while I'm doing this. And I'm just cleaning around here now just because I don't know I'm being crazy. Doing too much. Doing too much. There we go. Okay. I definitely got some white vinegar soaked into the important area. But I still have the cap on the tank and there's still some fuel in here probably a gallon or two. So there are still fuel vapors getting through that area there. So if this doesn't work, but it almost works, it'll be because of that, because I didn't drain the fuel tank and get that area super, super dry. So we're gonna let this vinegar dry for a little bit, and then I'm gonna set up a place where I can start mixing up a little bit of JB Weld, and I'm thinking I'm just gonna take my rubber glove finger and just kinda glob some of that on right through here, let that dry, and see what we got. I repositioned things a little bit here. I've got tape over top of the lens of the fuel gauge. I've got the official type of thing for mixing up JB Weld, which is a scrap of cardboard and an old putty knife. And I got my JB Weld right here. And you're supposed to mix it up 50-50, I believe. So, because the tubes are the same size, I just, from what I recall, I think that's how you mix up JB Weld. Okay, I'll read the instructions real quick just to check. Blah, blah, blah. Mix ratio of one to one. So, 50-50. Oh, cool. These have the little caps that'll puncture the, uh, puncture the seal. So I can just puncture them just like that. Boop. There's the black. And there's the red. Or white. Whatever. I don't know what it's going to be. We'll have to see. Ooh. I like how you can pop the cap all the way in there. That's kind of cool. All right, so we just need a little blob of it right here. So let's put a little bit of this. Set it down below. And a little bit of that. Cap them off. Set them down below. Don't know if you can see that. Got the black and the white. And we're just going to mix it together. And turn it into gray. You know, it's funny. Some people have used JB Weld a million times for a million things. I've really only ever used it a couple of times ever. All right, going for a consistent gray look. That looks pretty gray to me. And now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna glob it on right there. That's what I'm gonna do. Take my finger, kind of smear it through that little area right there. Make sure I'm pushing it into that crack. And let's just put another little glob of it on here, just for fun, because we've got it. There we go. Oh, I am so glad I put the tape over top of that, because it just got on the tape. And this is my dad's putty knife, so I don't want to ruin it. So I brought a paper towel, and I can wipe that off. Putty knife is probably 70 years old. Who knows? All right, there we go. Glove, JB Weld, putty knife, yada, yada, yada. According to the instructions, it sets in four to six hours and it cures in 15 to 24 hours and 15 hours 
before putting object back in use. All right, let's let this dry for a while and see how it goes. Okay, here we are 24 hours later, and it says that basically cures in 15 to 24 hours. So I gave it the max time, and it looks cool. It's gray and plasticky right here. And uh, I'm gonna take this tape off. Here, let me zoom in and get a close up of this. So here's what it looks like all finished and dry. Um, the split was right here in the middle, so we've got a good coating all around here. Hopefully this is adhesed to the plastic pretty well. Let's pull off this tape, That's, that should be satisfying. Oh great, little piece of the tape is left underneath of here. Uh, ah, but I can kind of cut it off here with my thumb. There we go, look at that, see? Not too shabby. All right. I also had to loosen the cap. So that way it wouldn't expand and put pressure on, uh, on my, new, my new section right there. Okay, so this is gonna be moment of truth time right here. Got the cap tightened back up again. Let's turn it this way so we get some more light on it. All right, what we're looking for is any gas to be leaking out of this area right here. So I'm going to give it a good tip. I'm going to actually uh, flip it over. And normally I would see gas all around here if I did something like that. Like every time I go to fill it up, it would slosh around and gas would come right out there. So it's passing that test. And now just for grins, let's go ahead and put some more gas in it. Just to make sure it's not leaking. All right, so now we got about four gallons in the tank. Should be enough to see if there's any uh, kind of leakage issues here. As we slosh it around. And I think we can consider that a success. I don't see anything leaking. I'm giving a little pushes on the tank like it would do under pressure. And there is nothing new around there except for a little bit of shiny residue from the gas that was there before. I think we can consider this a success. So our fuel tank repair experiment seemed to go pretty well. Obviously time will tell whether or not JB Weld has permanently fixed this tank. However, I'm gonna be able to get a few more uses out of it at the very least. I feel like I can trust it it's obviously not any worse than it was before. And it was very inexpensive. This is less than a $10 repair. If this fails, I will buy a new tank. If a bunch of you comment below saying this was a completely dangerous, wrong thing to do, I will replace this tank. It's that simple. But nothing has led me to believe that this was a risky or dangerous repair at this point in time. These tanks will swell up. They'll swell up round whenever it's hot out and puff up. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whenever the pressure is in this tank and it's swelled up and puffy, whether or not this continues to hold or some other spot starts to leak. It is an old tank. That very well could happen. But it's better than it was and it's no longer leaking any fuel or fuel vapor out at this moment. So I consider that a win. I hope you liked this video. Share with me your experiences if you've tried to do some of these things yourself. And please be sure to like, 
comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. By doing so, you help me to know that I should keep making videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Let's go put this in the boat.